I'd like to go through all seven characters, but we'll just be pressure for now. Let me, tell, let me tell you something happened to me that changed the way it helped me understand, and, and I hope it's happened to you, but maybe not as in this extreme. Bali's probably some of the best surf in the world. I've been surfing it for many, many years, and one day, in not particularly big surf, but on a reef break with coral reef underneath it, the wave picked me up and threw me head first into the reef. When I came up, I put my hand in my head and I discovered a hole about that big, blood just pouring everywhere and there was no one around. Now, what is interesting, is there was no beach where I was surfing. There was only one very, very small cave entrance at Uluwatu for me to get in. And I was down past the cave and if I didn't paddle immediately, the current would have washed me so far past the cave, I would have had to paddle another 300 metres all the way around to start again and there was no way I would have made, I would have bled out. Now, at that particular point in time, when I thought I was going up, but the wave was putting me down instantly when it happened, I have never in my life thought more clearly. I have never in my life been more focused. The chemicals that kicked into my brain when that instant happened gave me the most clearest picture of what I needed to do in my life. I've never been that focused. I had to get in. I had to get into the cave. My son was out surfing. I had to, funnily enough, I was thinking about him as well. Everyone that looked at me almost fainted. I then had to climb up about 30 stairs to get to the Warungs. I got to the Warungs. Again, people sort of, you know, who is this guy? I was just absolutely covered in blood. I then had to climb another 60 stairs. I had to get, find my driver in a car park of a lot of cars, get in the car and drive what took about an hour and 15 minutes to hospital. And then we stuffed around with insurance. And it took four hours before they put 88 stitches in my head. Let me explain what is going on just quickly from a neuroscience perspective. If I could be so primitive as to say we have two parts of the brain, the old-fashioned brain and the new one, the neocortex. When you have an accident like that, when an emergency situation like, like what happened to me in Bali happens, immediately the primitive part of your brain takes over. Now, your brain only has a certain amount of bandwidth. And it cannot multitask as much as you think it can. It can only hyperthread between different things very quickly. Which means when you have an accident like I had, every single neuron in my brain that was alive and awake and functioning moved across to the old part of the brain to try and say, Andrew, fight or flight, you must survive. That's why I never thought more clearly in my life. And so what happened in that case called the primitive or the reptilian brain, it triggers a reaction, it's a response to fear and, and threats, uh, rejection and judgment from an emotional perspective. And as a result, when you're functioning on what we call the red, the red zone of the brain, you become anxious, you move into an absolute survival mode, you become moody, angry, and you become totally self-focused. Now, unfortunately, it's not just a surfing accident that opens up that part of the brain. Most of us, with our good friend's stress and pressure and a bit of narrow-minded thrown in, and some of those killers, most of us spend most of our time in the workplace functioning on the reptilian part of our brain because we're constantly in survival mode, constantly trying to deal with particular issues. If you can move into the blue zone, the neocortex, the new part of the brain, it was interesting they did a survey around schools and they interviewed thousands of kids as to what makes a great teacher. And three things came up to me. Remember those teachers that when the bell went, you didn't want to leave the classroom? Remember those teachers where you're looking at your watch saying, I have to leave? Well, what they discovered is what makes a fantastic teacher, as I would say what makes a fantastic leader, is that you are safe and secure. The teachers listened to me, respected me, and believed in me. And teachers knew their subject and how to communicate it. And when those three things were present in school kids, here's what happened. They had the confidence to work. The kids wanted to learn. They had greater respect, and they would go the extra mile. Now, my question to you when you're trying to create a creative environment is to not ignore the metaphysical side. It's very exciting to come to a conference where we really are focusing on the physical side. And the, together, the physical side and the metaphysical side, I think, will make a fantastic place for people. Fear is a good thing. Fear saved my life. But it kills creativity. But I believe that when all these things are left to fester in an organisation and they're not dealt with, and we're not able to profile them, and we're not able to hear those voices and, and spot them when they're coming, then creativity will not be able to flourish. Thank you very much.